right. Matt, thank you so much for taking the time today. And congratulations on such a beautiful story that's now become such a beautiful and impactful film. Thank you. Um, to start off, can you talk a little bit about the formation of this idea for the Starling? And I read that it was born out of your experiences working in a mental health hospital, but it's really morphed into this incredible story of reconciling grief. Right. Yeah. No, thank you very much. I, you know, it's, I, it was kind of born out of several different sort of experiences. Fortunately, I never had to experience the level of grief that the couple in this story do, you know, that wasn't the impetus for the story, but I did work in the field of mental health and I know how difficult that can be for people to, to find um, not a cure, but to find help. And, um, but I was also very interested in this idea that, you know, um, random chaotic suffering befalls us all at times. And we've seen it in our lives and, I really wanted to explore that idea of what happens when something that seems so random would befall, befall a couple and um, how do they sort of find their way back after that. So that's sort of where it really came from. But yes, I did. I did work in mental health a little bit. I actually had a surgeon who did sur- uh, operation on me in, in college to fix a torn ankle ligament who ended up I found out was a veterinarian at one time in his life. So that sort of the little seeds of ideas, I guess, kind of together for me here. (laughs) So, you know, hearing that uh, explanation, it kind of leads me to think just about the long journey that the film's been on Mm -hmm. uh, and having, you know, the script being on the 2005 blacklist and now we're in 2021, but you, you just mentioned the randomness of life and sort of the things that hit us and, If, if there's anything more random or unexpected than the past two years, I think, you know, yeah, it, right. It's, that would be troubling. Uh, but do you think that it's kind of a, a great time for a film like this to come out and maybe teach us how to go about dealing with some of that grief that we sort of can't control? I hope so. I hope you're right about that. I, I do think there's an opportunity at least to, I think we all want to look for that ray of hope that, uh, you know, sunshine at the end of this dark tunnel that we've been in for now about two years. And, um, and there's, you know, that desire for hopefulness, give us a reason to hope. And I I think there's a little bit of that in here. I think the film also in dealing with mental health and trying to take an honest look at mental health. I think if if we look around now, I think people are starting to have that conversation even more, you know, coming off the Olympics and uh, the courage that we saw by gymnasts like Simone Biles, you know, Absolutely. openly discussing and sharing these things. Uh, you know, when we start treating mental health like we do physical health, I think we are taking a big step forward. And um, and in this story, I really wanted that to be central to it. I don't know if it would have been 15 years ago, but it certainly is now. That's a great point. One of the things that you do so well in the script is the balancing of subtle humor uh, and, you know, the the journey, I would say, for for joy and the reconciliation of that grief. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a proper balance there that I think is really, uh, really comes through and shines through in the film. Was that a difficult balance to strike when tackling a such a deep subject? Yeah, it was. I, you know, I certainly didn't want to feel... Um, like I wasn't giving the proper respect to the the story that they were, the tragedy that they were dealing with by being whimsical in the humor. I do think that life is a little bit absurd though, even on a daily basis. And I think, you know, if you look close enough, you'll find the humor. It does seem to find its way to us, whether we like it or not, you know? Um, And uh, I, so yes, I, I appreciate that. You know, sometimes I think what's that old line, just a spoonful of, sugar helps the medicine go down, you know, it's kind of that way. I feel like if you can, I didn't want to overwhelm an audience with tragedy and darkness, but I think if I can give them a little bit of light to go with it, uh, the comedy is that it helps deliver it, if you will, that message, you know, I'm hoping people watch this film and ask themselves those questions. You know, how do you get beyond stuff like this? Because we're all going to deal with it, right? If you haven't already, had to deal with any kind of loss in your life and tried to make sense of it, you know, you do begin to ask those questions, you know, why me? Why did this happen? Um, why now? And um, it changes you, right? And 
it changes the way you look at the world. And, you know, the, in particular, this character who's in the hospital is struggling to see himself beyond what his reality was before it was shattered. And so he does, he's not sure if there is a reality for him beyond that. And so I hope we can all find that there is going to be a reality for us at some point when we get beyond this. And Chris O'Dowd does such a wonderful job of, I think, bringing that character to life and mm -hmm. um, really, I guess, bringing the, the audience into that struggle. And when we're talking about the humor and that balance, I remember when I finished watching, I, I thought immediately, wow, Melissa McCarthy is the perfect individual to just be her goofy self in some points. You know, the final one, the final line, I think, of the movie, um, you know, not the not a spoiler or anything, but the, the, the bird flies into her head again. And she says, Oh, S O B. And yeah. it just made me laugh so much because it's right back to that. Life is life. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Ted and I talked about that too. Ted Melfi, the director, when we were talking about that last scene and, you know, how do we want to, how do you want to end it? What do you want it to be? What do you want it to feel like, you know? And uh, I had originally talked about just, just having the bird looking down you know, on them, like they're there, you know, the bird's there, the bird's always going to be there, you know, and you sort of shield yourself and you try to go on. And, but it became, I think a little bit more interesting to have it actually attack, you know? And uh, yeah, she's so good. I can't say enough good things about her. You know, um, I knew I, it was something that was great there when I was just on the set watching her do a scene and I found myself with, tears in my eyes watching it and I'm like oh boy I this is pretty powerful you know yeah there's a real ability I think to connect with her when yes. given that she's had such a you know a comedic uh career so far but when she gets into those personal dramatic roles like yeah. this I think there's really a, an, a way that we can identify with her so I really enjoyed her in there but you know, is it true? I had read somewhere that Lily and Jack were originally switched in the yeah, script. That's right. That's absolutely right. Yeah. No, that came that came with this recent, uh, what the final version of this movie. Um, it was our uh, our producer uh, Dylan Sellers who came up with this idea. Melissa was on board to do the film, and but we wanted to. I think it was Dylan's idea originally. I for purposes of like breathing a little bit of new life into the story and also with this opportunity with Melissa McCarthy to do more with that role. And so they asked me, would I be willing to make that change? And Ted called me and he's like, just do a quick find replace and change the characters and we'll read it and we'll see what we think. We'll see if this is a good idea. And to be honest with you, Joe, I, you know, I'd had this story for a while and it wasn't, it was hard for me to get excited about it again. You know, when you've read something a gazillion times and rewritten and tweaked and, and so I was like, Oh boy, what are we doing? And when I went back in there and I did this change and I read it, I was just like, Oh my God, this, it's a new story. It's, it's just, I fell in love with it. I really did. I was so excited. Um, it just breathed new life into it. I really, I loved the characters even more. I was so happy that we made that change. It was great. Yeah. Well, going back into it for what I'm sure is like the 200th time, were there any other changes that you found yourself making? Whew, yeah. You know, I mean, the interesting thing is, is that this film where they shot everything, I was really happy that they shot the script, but at that time when they finally assembled it, I think it was Ted said it was like two hours and 50 minutes long. Wow. And so they've taken a full hour and some, out of the movie. So there were some storylines that went away. I'm sorry. You know, I wish there was a director's cut. I would like to have seen them. You know, uh, there's some pretty big names in this movie and they had a bit more, you might imagine, you know, like a Timothy Olyphant, for example. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there was uh, there were some changes that were made, I think, more post, though, to the film actually being released um, to the script itself. You know, really, it not a lot. I mean, we had to modernize it a little bit. Had to add cell phones, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, no, it was you know at the heart, it's a it's a small town. It's you know kind of invisible characters, if you will. I always thought of it. You know, I didn't want to do like an ad exec in Manhattan. I wanted an assistant grocery store manager. I wanted it to be people that we pass by in our daily lives and don't even imagine that they have you know, 
these sort of personal dramas going on, which they do. We know they do. We all do. Um, so I was really much more interested in exploring that. And so I, at the end of the day, I, I always saw it as sort of a small, quirky dramedy is what I was going for. I love that. Can you talk a little bit about the inclusion of the birds, of the starling, uh, mm -hmm. and sort of where that came from? Yeah, the idea of, you know, I, I think it, I think it originated out of this idea that, uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, I, I wanted to explore this story or this nagging sort of dilemma that I had always had in my head that of, nat of the natural world or the universe's indifference to human suffering. You know, I, it's always been a nagging idea for me. It's just, I see it in, in daily life, you know, bad things happening to good people and why you know, and how do we make sense out of it? And we do come up with quite a few rationalizations to try and make sense of things. You know, um, I had, I had attended a funeral one time, sad to say of, of a first grader who had tried, who had died in an accident. There were a lot of things being said at that funeral, um, you know, just like, Oh, he's in a better place and so on and forth. And then the father got up and spoke and he says, no, his, his the better place is right here with me and he shouldn't be gone. And he was, so he wasn't accepting it. Right. So that, those kind of ideas and how we as human beings try to make sense of it, you know, this universal sort of chaos, I, I really wanted to explore that. And the bird kind of became a representation of that for me. That's as simple as that, you know, the natural world. And uh, um, yeah, starlings, you know, the more I knew about starlings, I wasn't really a bird guy to begin with. <laughs> Mockingbird had been taken. I knew that. I couldn't touch that one. <laughs> but uh, you know, the starling is a really fascinating bird. It really is, and uh, not indigenous to the United States, but has made its way into uh, our natural world here. Uh, very invasive, very territorial. They're not nice. They're not friendly, but they're brilliant too. They're geniuses. Right. They mimic. You know sounds uh really smart um they at one point were going to hire a starling wrangler there's a woman up in upstate new york that actually has starlings trained and it's crazy how well trained they are that's amazing yeah. <laughs> i do think they were such a great through line and a thread for the overall story every time i guess melissa mccarthy's character would revisit uh, you know, the tree and see what was happening there. Um, there kind of was that understanding that, you know, they're just, the starlings are doing the same thing that her and Chris O'Dowd's character were trying to do, right? As we all are, right? Yeah. We're all subject to the same forces, aren't we? You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you hope the people walk away from the starling with? You know, I really hope that people walk out with um, a sense of uh, hopefulness, you know? Uh, not that people necessarily in desperation but I, I do think that films can remind us of our ability to get beyond to find a way forward and uh that's my hope is that people take that message because i don't think i'm the only one who's ever pondered these ideas i think there is some universal sort of shared experience with that yeah i would agree with that yeah. well hey it's an incredible film absolutely enjoyed it from beginning I to really end is one of those that really leaves you thinking um, and again, pondering sort of your own existence, but your relationship to the storyline and what they're dealing with. Yeah. Your next project is sort of a deviation from that dead for a dollar. Um, yeah. What can you tell us about that with Christoph Waltz, Willem Dafoe, Rachel Brosnan? Yeah, it, it, that's a really interesting, you're right, that is a big departure. <laughs> and no no birds. Uh, I'd look, I've always loved Westerns, right? You know, I, it's a genre that I thought uh, Clint Eastwood did a wonderful thing when, you know, when Unforgiven came out and reminded people, wow, this genre is not dead. And if handled well, it, it can really uh, be great again. You know, I think we exhausted it with TV shows and films had nauseam for, you know, decades before you and I. Um, so but it's something that I really have always loved. And so it was it was I wanted to come up with an idea. And again, it was sort of, it came out of an idea of what happens to somebody who may have served in the army 
at one point and was a scout and was responsible for doing some pretty awful things. What happens to them once those, you know, the, the war for, you know, America is over, uh, you know, and sort of the, the natives have been tamed, so to speak, you know, as they talked about it then. What happens to a person like that? Where do they fit into that new world at the turn of the century? And so that's where that was the genesis of that idea for that story. You know, I guess that's not so different than sort of the introspection of, you know, the human condition and right. how a human moves on from their experiences. So definitely see that through line. And uh, Matt, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. I really hope this is a film that people take to and watch because I do think that there is a lot to learn from it. Uh, and I just, I guess I thank you for being persistent with it for 15 yeah, plus bet. years now. <laughs> you bet. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. All right, you too.